take his liberty. Brother Acre, you're in a church that loves the word of God. Yes. And uh, we love holiness. We love the oneness. We love Acts 2.38. And I don't think you can run sheep off and saints off with the word of God. We're word people. Amen. I want you to come and just take your liberty and preach to us and sing and let your wife testify and preach if she preaches, whatever. Amen. God bless you. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We praise you. We magnify your name. I'm so thankful to be here again today. God has blessed us so much. I've, I myself personally have been richly blessed in this revival. I have been touched by the powerful hand of Almighty God. And I'm thankful that He still touches in this hour. I'm thankful that He still ministers to us. He still touches our lives. And I'm, I'm just so, I've just been blessed. Me and my, my wife and I have just richly been blessed this weekend. We appreciate and all the kind words, we appreciate all the hospitality that you have showed toward us. It's been a blessing to us. And um, I, I appreciate your pastor, brothers and sisters, people. We had a great time yesterday, just enjoyed fellowship and got a chance to talk and got a chance to uh, just to fellowship with each other and enjoy being around positive people. Right. You'll be affected by the books you read and by the people that you're around. In your lifestyle from today forward, the things that you read and the, the people that you're around is going to affect your life. I encourage you to get around good people and read good things, and you will be blessed. And I have richly been blessed. It's good to see my good friend Greg praying last night. I appreciate that and know that the Lord has got great things in store for you. And I appreciate that, that step of faith and know that you know there may be some bumps in the road ahead, but there's a God in heaven that will always help you. There's a God in heaven that will always see you through. And I thank the Lord for that. And I appreciate that. Like I said, our room was nice. Our fruit basket was nice. And no doubt I've probably gained 10 pounds since I've been here. And I'm a, a full gospel preacher. Amen. And I've been blessed. We appreciate the wonderful fellowship. Appreciate my good friend, Brother Josh, Sister Tiffany. We love and appreciate you all. And they have been just wonderful friends to us ever since I've met them. And um, their relationship and their friendship has been dear to us. And um, they're good people. They have the church at mind. They have a uh, passion for serving God and reaching the people. And just stop to say this, if whatever your church is, this church is doing, if it's Bible studies, if it's invited man cards, if it's uh, bus ministry, if they do a block party, outreach, whatever it is, get on board. You'll be blessed. You'll see the blessings of Almighty God come into your life unmeasurably. My wife and I, we've been appointed. We've got so many jobs that we don't even know how to get them all done. I mean, we're, we're busy. Uh, we're working a full-time job as we speak, but God has blessed us. We're uh, working as outreach director and Sunday school superintendent there in our church in Camelsville and, and uh, teaching Bible studies and, and preaching there. And just an awesome move of God been working in Camelsville. The Lord's just, there's a revival spirit everywhere, I believe, right now. But uh, we've had an opportunity to do these block parties and get out into the city and, and make a difference. And we're making a difference, and God's blessing us. And we've seen the Lord bless us in unmeasurable fashion. We've, we've seen ourselves put in money and effort into this block party and someone write us a check for over the amount and double the amount that we had spent. I say that not to brag, but to tell you that God's able to move in your life. And if you'll get on board, God will bless you to the, to the, to the depths that you can even pass beyond what you can think and imagine. And I thank the Lord for that. Last night's service, if you wasn't here, you just missed out. It's the only thing I know to say. The Holy Ghost moved in this service in such a powerful way. And I'm thankful. I needed that. I needed the touch. I needed the, the Lord to minister to me. And I'm thankful. I've never had the Lord to uh, move in, in, in a service after preaching hellfire like that. <laughs> Praise God. But he's able to move and minister, and I appreciate him. Such a good Savior. Appreciate my wife. I'd like for her to testify today. If you can, you can be seated. Stand and testify. I'll bless you.
Amen. Yes. Amen. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I say again, I appreciate my pastor allowing me to, to come, and I also appreciate Jesus Christ, all that he means to me. What a wonderful Savior. If you can, stand with me. Turn your Bible to uh, Numbers chapter 35 and verse number 1. As you're turning there, the sister that was testifying that um, said sometimes we don't do things, you know, we're not doing things that we should not do, but many times we don't do things that we should do. Many times we don't praise God, we don't worship God, we don't pray, we're not willing to dedicate ourselves and different things, but God will bless that when you do that, and uh, he will also bless you uh, whenever you uh, begin to speak faith and begin to believe that and begin to expect that as I preached here on Friday night. I was praying for my mother, or for my father and my sister, they're both backslid, and uh, they need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I was praying for them one day in prayer, and I was asking God to save them, and praying and praying, and asking God to touch their lives, and he spoke to me and said, I've already touched their lives, and I've unheard your prayer, all you need to do is thank me for it in advance. Ever since that day, I've been thanking the Lord, I've been praying for my father and my sister, and said, I thank you for for filling them with the Holy Ghost in faith. And I believe that God's going to do it. I'm expecting it to happen. So if I go home tonight and they're there and they get the Holy Ghost, it's not going to catch me off guard because I'm believing that God has heard my prayer and God's going to move and God's going to answer. And you, you can take that home with you. That's something that no doubt God's already heard your prayer. And if you will take that with you and understand that God can help you if you'll just begin to speak faith and begin to believe that today in Jesus' name. Uh, my ankle, uh, I've had, I sprung my ankle sometimes a few weeks ago, about 12 weeks ago, and I've had some problems with it. Last night, somewhere in the course of the service, the Lord healed my body, and I thank the Lord for that. Can you give the Lord praise for still healing in this house? Thank you, Jesus. Friday night, I, uh, I got to preaching, and I got excited and just giving everything I had. My voice about shot, and I was going home, and I'm talking to my wife, and I said, I don't know how in the world I can evangelize with no voice. And as she said, well, it's going to be better tomorrow and stronger than it's ever been. And the Lord healed my voice last night also. I thank the Lord for that. He's a God that still heals in this hour. And I appreciate him and love him so very much. He's a good God. Numbers chapter 35 and verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites the inheritance of their possessions, cities to dwell in. And ye shall give also unto the Levite suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle and for their goods and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. And ye shall measure from without the city on the east side two thousand cubits, on the south side two thousand cubits, and on the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits. And the city shall be in the midst, this shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge which you shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither, and to them he shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which you shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities. Them shall you give with their suburbs. And the cities which you shall give shall be of the possessions of the children of Israel. From them that they have many to you shall give many, but from them that have few you shall give few. Everyone shall give of the cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance which he inherited. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge, for you that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. Can you lay down your Bibles? Let's lift both hands on the Lord and let's pray. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We give you the glory, Lord, the praise and honor. You're a mighty God, Lord. You're worthy of the praise. In this service today, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you've already done in this revival. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for those, Lord, that has been changed and transformed. Lord, for those that has been spiritually refilled. Lord, I pray, Lord, in this service today, that you anoint every ear to hear, Lord, every heart to receive. I pray you anoint this vessel of clay, Lord, to minister uh, in the Holy Ghost, and we'll give you the glory, the praise, uh, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, can you clap your hands on the Lord and give him praise? In Jesus' name, he's worthy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Amen, amen. You can be seated. I'm not used to starting church on Sunday night till six o'clock. So if it wasn't for uh, having to go home and preach, I might preach from now until six. But I'm thankful that God has blessed us. I was preaching in, in Lexington, Brother McGraw's church, and first time I'd ever preached there, and I got to preach, and I was about into the service about 10 minutes. And when I got into the service about 10 minutes, there was a lady on the front row that started tapping her watch. <laughs> and I, she was signifying to me the time was already up, and I needed to be going home. I thought, my Lord, this is going to be a rough night. But I pray that you will stay with me in this service today for just a little while. I'd like to preach to you for a while in this service this afternoon. I'm just a city boy. My cousin Caleb was a country boy like myself. His mom and dad decided to make a move to the big city of Decatur, Illinois. I was somewhat envious of him when I began to think about all the great things I'd heard about in the big city. I began to think about all the fun that I could have, what the big city had to offer, and the wonderful sights that I would be missing by being in the country. Boy, I had a deep desire to go to that city. My cousin, no doubt he did not make it any, any a bit uh, uh, better whenever he was would talk to me on the phone. He would make that desire very desperate in my life whenever he would tell me of all the things that he had seen that day. And he would tell me of all the places that he had been and all the sights that he had to behold. He was always telling me something good about the city. Many things to do, wonderful places to go and untold sights to behold. My desire became a reality one summer. My sister and I had the privilege of making the trip to the big city. We stayed for a week and man, it was all that I had expected it to be. We had a great time. We went fishing. We had a great time there in the city. We went and seen the arts uh, there in St. Louis. We had a wonderful time uh, as our stay in the city. Uh, and we had a great enjoyable time with our family. Uh, and it was much beyond my mind could ever phantom uh, as a young man. I didn't even know that there were so many things uh, to see and do uh, in the city. Uh, but I come to talk to you about and preach to you about today uh, a city of refuge. Uh, a place that in the this world today. Uh, it's not a literal city. Uh, it's not a place that you would go to somewhere uh, in this continent. Uh, it's not a place that you would go to uh, and would have a place a state that would give you uh, a place that you can run to uh, and look at the sights to behold. Uh, but I'm talking and preaching to you about a city uh, of refuge. A city of refuge uh, called the church uh, of the living God. Uh, I'm very passionate about this city uh, because it's been my life source. Uh, it's been the very reason uh, that I'm able to live today. It's been the very reason that I have joy when I wake up in the morning. It's the very reason that I have a smile on my face each day of the week. It has been the greatest blessing in my life. In our text, the cities of refuge was a place that was heard talked about and no doubt desires was desperate to dwell in that city. Moses was commanded to establish six cities of refuge from the total of 48 given to the Levites. They were located on each side of the Jordan. All six cities were located so easy so they were very accessible and easy to get to in the time of trouble. If someone would murder someone by accident, then he would be hunted down by the avenger of blood and killed, which was the the closest relative to the dead huh, person that had been taken, the life had been taken. Huh? It was literally an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth in that day. Huh? But God placed a place of mercy huh? and God strategically placed a place huh, that you can run to huh, and you can find safety huh? and you can find security huh? and a place that you can find hope huh? and a place huh, that you can find rest huh, for your weary soul huh? and understand today huh, He's not left this generation uh, without a city uh, of refuge. Uh, it's called uh, the church. If while running you can make it into the city called refuge, then you would be saved from the avenger of blood. If you were, if you understand that this city was not a place uh, that God had created for those that premeditated murder on someone, it was not that the evil could uh, could go free in that day uh, as it is in our day. Our judicial system is, is corrupt, uh, and understand it is, looks like it's for the for the bad guy uh, and for the criminal more uh, than it is for the ones that's trying to live right. Uh, but understand that city of refuge was not that at all. It was a place that God had placed there in the wilderness and to let them know that there's still a place of mercy. There's still a place of refuge. It doesn't matter what happens in your life. There's a place that you can run to. If you premeditated murder, you would be judged and put to death. 
But if there was an accident and that happened in your life, maybe by war or whatever situation happened in your life in that day, and someone's life was taken by an accident, it was not premeditated. There were cities of refuge where you could run to and you could be safe. Not only was it for those days and, and for those Levites, and not only was it for those days, uh, but it was also for the stranger that was be passing through that land. Uh, and if something happened uh, and someone life, someone's life was taken unawares, uh, then they understood that they could run to a city of refuge. Uh, understand, I don't know if you know it or not, uh, but we live in a corrupt world. Uh, and we live in a place where the avenger of blood, uh, which is the adversary uh, of our soul. Uh, and he's lurking. Uh, and he's trying to take our life. Uh, and the only safe place uh, is in the city uh, of refuge. Uh, you got to get in that city. Uh, and you got to stay in this city uh, of refuge today. This is the greatest place you'll ever find. It's not any, there's nothing out there the world has to behold. Uh, and it's any greater than the city. Uh, and I wouldn't have to tell you that today. Uh, because if you was here last night, uh, you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, to be in the presence of Almighty God uh, is the greatest thing uh, in the world. Uh, there's nothing any greater than the presence uh, of Almighty God dwelling uh, among His people uh, in the city of refuge. The Old Testament reveals the importance uh, and the scarceness of human life and by the laws that it was to protect that human life. And understand it is that same way today that we live and God came to seek and save them that are lost. Uh, it does not matter how bad they are in this world today. Uh, there's a city of refuge. Uh, I said it does not matter how bad they are in sin. Uh, there's a city of refuge. Uh, it does not matter how, how much society tells us uh, that you might as well leave them alone uh, that they're too far gone. Uh, but I can hear the cry uh, from the city of refuge. And says, come on, if you can make it to this city, you'll be in safety. You'll find a place of security. You'll find a place of peace and joy. Your life is very important. Every life is very important to God, but it's also very important to the adversary and the avenger of blood in our life called the devil. If today you have not made it into the city of refuge, then there is an avenger of blood that's out to get you. He's out to destroy your life by the means of drugs, alcohol, pornography, whatever there is out there in this world uh, to pollute, pollute your mind and destroy uh, your, your, your morals and your, your ethics uh, and everything that there is out there in this world. Uh, it is It has a goal. It has a dream. Uh, and it's to destroy your life. Uh, and you say, how you know that? Because I lived there uh, and I understood uh, what was out there in this world. Uh, but one day I heard somebody tell me uh, of a place uh, that I could run to and I could find refuge and I could find strength and I could find joy and I said I'm going to go to that city of refuge John chapter 10 and verse 10 says the thief cometh not but for to, keep, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy but he says I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly the avenger of blood is stalking each and every day he's got his he's got his sword out ready to just to, to uh, destroy your life uh, and many times we find ourselves endeavoring in things uh, and think that we'll just be able to walk out whenever we get good and ready uh, but understand the adversary uh, of our soul he doesn't show us uh, the alcoholic uh, he doesn't show us the drug addict on the billboard uh, but he shows us all the good things uh, how we can endeavor ourselves into uh, and then when we get out there uh, he He's just waiting for a weak moment uh, to stick the dagger uh, in our heart uh, and take our life. Uh, but I've come to tell you uh, that you're not living in a city uh, out there that there's not a place uh, of refuge. Uh, there's still a church uh, in this hour. Uh, I said there's still a church uh, that you can run to. Can you clap your hands on the Lord if you thank the Lord for the church of the living God? This church is the city of refuge. If you don't know it, whenever you're in the city of refuge, you feel peace, you feel joy, you feel contentment, you feel security, you feel the pleasures of Almighty God that giveth no sorrow in the city of refuge. But it doesn't take for just a moment for you to go to Walmart and to see all the things that is happening in our world today. You see men with men and women with women. You see people that's got some of the ungodliest hairdos in all of the world. And 
you think, what in the world is wrong with those people? They avenge their blood. He's trying to take their life. And he's got them going down a road. And one of these days, if they don't find their city of refuge, he's going to take their life. And they're going to be out of here for eternity. But I've come to preach to you today. There's still a city of refuge in this hour. Oh, clap your hands. Thank the Lord for the city. Thank the Lord for the city of refuge today. Proverbs 18 and verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it and are safe. Understand today the safest place you can be is in the presence of Almighty God. Psalms 91 and verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He hath delivered thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with thy feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror that flyed by night nor for the air that flyeth by day. For therefore nor for the pestilence uh, that walketh in the darkness uh, nor for the destruction uh, that wasted the noonday uh, a thousand shall fall at thy right at thy side uh, and ten thousand at thy right hand uh, but it shall not come nigh uh, unto thee uh, I've come to preach to every saint of God in this house uh, that you're in the city uh, you're in the greatest place to be uh, you need to fall in love uh, with the church uh, you need to fall in love uh, with the city of refuge you never see anybody bowing out on a marriage that they're in love you never see someone walking out of the church when they're in love with the church you never find somebody bowing out and getting upset and getting disturbed and getting in despair when they're in love I've come to tell you the devil he knows it doesn't matter if you come but when you fall in love with this thing and understand say I'm in the safest place that I can ever be in the city of refuge whenever I got the Holy Ghost February the 4th, 2001. You've heard my story, but I got the Holy Ghost. I came to church that Sunday night. They began to play the song, I Ran to the Altar. I did not know how God was going to do it. I did not know how God was going to change my life. I knew my life was a hopeless wreck. I knew the city that I'd been living in and the despair that I'd been living in, I was sick and tired of it. I went to home many a night and I'd be drunk and I'd cry myself to sleep and say, God, I'm never going to do this again. I'd wake up in the morning and when the hangover wore off, I'd be right back in the same old mess. I was in the drugs and in the alcohol and the relationships of the world. But I heard my dear mother tell me about a city that I could go to where there was peace and joy and gladness and worship and I could shout and I could dance and I could get joy unspeakable and full of glory. So I told my mom, I said, you press my clothes and I'll go with you. To this day, she's never moved that fast ever than she did that day. She pressed clothes, boy, I mean, no telling what she was singing. <laughs> Won't we have a time when we get over yonder? But she pressed my clothes and I went. And I found out that in the city of refuge was everything that I'd heard about. There was real peace, there was real joy, there was real contentment. There was real life inside the city of refuge. My problem had become more than just a plague, but it had become the purpose for living. My faith was so far gone that I couldn't even see another day that would even be better than what I was living in. My only hope hinged upon one more good drunk and one more bad relationship, one more bad high. My dreams were demolished. My goals for living were gone. My peace was a thing of the past. My self-control had already become out of control. My comfort was so clouded that I couldn't even see a day that I would be able to rest in peace. My happiness was held hostage by horrible relationships, parties, and all the friends that wanted to get me involved in the drugs and the alcohol. My vision had vanished, and now it was vanity. My speech was filled with slurred remarks, sadness, and sorrow. I was running from the avenger of blood, 
and I would run until all kinds of things would happen in my life. But the moment I stepped into the city, I felt the hand of an almighty God let me know I was in a place of refuge. Understand, parents, there's something very important. My mother went to church, and she's, the, she's one of the greatest women in my life other than my wife. She is an awesome, awesome lady of God. She's an awesome mother. She's been the greatest thing before I ever got the whole way, before I ever got married. She would always encourage me. She would always help me out. She, she don't spare no punches, though. <laughs> now, I never did get my mom to find, jump on my side just because something was wrong. So every time I'd come in, I'd say, this and that's going on. My mom would say, you know what you need. You need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I'm thinking, my Lord, I don't want to talk to her very long. And I'd move on. But my mom was a, was a great stronghold in my life. She helped me out a lot. And understand, whenever she went to church, when she come home, she didn't eat the pastor for lunch. Well, I'm going to preach to you. This is my last last opportunity, right? So I'm just going to preach to you. And whenever I went home, my mom, whenever she came home from church uh, for the people, she wasn't eating the pastor for lunch. Uh, she wasn't talking about how they didn't sing her song. Uh, oh, come on, somebody. I feel like preaching now. I said she didn't get there. Uh, and she didn't say, well, they didn't sing my song. Uh, they didn't treat me right. Uh, but she'd come home telling me about how good God was uh, and how the presence of Almighty God had moved in her life and it made me desire the city. It made me look at the city in a different view. I wanted to go to the city. She didn't bring her problems home. She didn't come home telling me about how pastor preached on her, how the sister so-and-so did this and brother so-and-so did that. I didn't find her on the phone gossiping about the pastor and gossiping about the song leader and gossiping about the outro I'm preaching now and, and all that stuff. But every time I talked to mama, she would tell me about the presence and the power of Almighty God. And as a young man, I looked at that city and I said, that's the place I want to be. That's the place I want to go. I want to get in the city of refuge. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Give him praise. See, you can preach like this when it's your last day. Well, understand, parents, there's something very important you got to understand today. And I stopped to preach. I'm not a father. I have no kids. That's why I like preaching. But I don't know nothing about it. So I just have to depend on Jesus. But understand, parents, if you go home and you run down the pastor and you run down the church and you run down the mu oh, and you run down the music leader and you run down the outreach director and you run down everything that's out there in the church, don't you expect your lovely, lovely little children to want to go to that city? I said, don't you expect them to want to go to that city? But if you'll go home and tell them about how great it is in the city, they'll desire to go there. Oh, clap your hands and shout with me with a voice of triumph. I'm in the city. I'm in the city. I'm in the city. I'm just a city boy. But understand, parents, it's very, very important to you to not talk about the things that happen in the city. I love this city. Peace replaced my problems. Power replaced my weakness. Blessings replaced my burdens. Love replaced my lust. Long lasting joy replaced a life of jeopardy. Vision replaced vanished dreams. True happiness replaced heartaches and hopelessness. Faith replaced fear. Light replaced darkness. And let me tell you, dancing replaced depression. I've come to tell you, you ought to dance in the city. You ought to shout in the city. You ought to clap your hands in the city. You ought to be thankful you're in the city. I said you ought to rejoice that you're in the city of refuge. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands unto the Lord and worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, get excited about being in the city. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Oh, give the Lord another hand clap of praise. 
He's worthy. I'm in the city. I'm in the city. Now, when I got in the city, I had one kind of misguided <laughs> uh, understanding or preconceived idea from my mom. No, you know how I told you my mom didn't come home and tell me about bad problems, and she went through some bad things in the previous church that she was in. But when she got home, she didn't run everything down. But I had a preconceived idea that whenever I got in the city, <laughs> everything was perfect. Well, guess what? It's not. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I said, there's problems even in the city. There's situations that happen in the city. There's times I got my feelings hurt in the city. There's times that I went home and I had to bury my head in a pillow uh, in the city. Uh, there's times that when the preacher preached on me uh, and it dealt with my heart uh, and I felt bad uh, about being what I was being uh, and I had to go home uh, and I felt a little bit down in my spirit uh, while I was in the city. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, there may have been a little stink in the ark, uh, but it was a lot better uh, and the storm uh, on the outside stay in the city it's better here than out there I said it's better here than out there this is the place to be in the city of refuge Jesus Oh, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's so worthy. There's things that's going to happen in the city. There's problems that's going to happen in the city. But you can't allow those things to get in your spirit. You got to go to an altar of prayer. No doubt when Moses, or when Moses, when Noah took all those two of each kind on the ark, he started, you know, Daddy got to thinking, now, now, Lord, I know how beasts are. And I know when I get them in here that I'm going to be housed up because it's going to be raining. There's going to be a storm on the outside. But he understood something that we must understand. That the storm on the outside is much, much de more devastating than the sink on the inside. And there's not, it's not ever always going to be perfect. And you must understand that your pastor and his wife, are, they're human. The ministry's human. The song leader, they're human. And all that good stuff. And understand that God will help us. But the greatest place is in the city of refuge. You need to live in the city. Learn in the city. Have fun in the city. There's something that many times us as apostolics think that we, we you know, we've took on this role that the, that the world thinks of us. There's a guy I work with and he come up to me and he was talking to me about, and I told him about me being a Pentecostal and about being a minister and all this, and I got to talking to him, witnessing to him. And one day he come up to me, rode up on it, he rides a little bike around the around the, the factory there. And he come up to me and he said, So now let me let me talk to you. Let me let me see. He said, Now you can't do this, and you can't do that, and you can't do this, and you can't go to the movies, and you can't uh, you can't drink, and you can't smoke, and you can't go to dances. I said, Hang on a minute. You might as well stop right there. I can do anything I get good and ready to do. <laughs> Hello, if I want to go out here this afternoon and smoke a joint, I can do it. But I found something a lot better in the city, and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to jeopardize what I got a hold of here for that out there. I said, it's not what we can't do. It's what we can do. It's not what we don't get to do. It's the presence of a mighty God that we get to enjoy in the city of refuge. We don't need to live on that mentality and that concept that we can't do this and we can't do that and we can't do this and we're not allowed to do that. But you gotta focus on the good things that God has allowed you to do. You're right, you don't you you can't get a divorce. You're all right if you're in the city and the Lord blesses your marriage, you won't have to worry about a divorce. You won't have to go worry about the drugs, you won't have to worry about the alcohol, you won't have to worry about sexually transmitted disease. Hello? I said in the city, it's a safe place to be. It's a great place to be. And you need to fall in love with this.
this city. You need to uphold the man of God that preaches to you in this city. This, this church and you need to take ownership of it. You need to say it's our church and you need to, you need to bind together and believe in this church and, and fight for this church. There's nothing wrong with you if you get upset. It's all right. Jesus said you can get angry and sin not. So if somebody starts talking about your pastor, set them straight. Hello? You can blame it on the evangelist. He said do it. But understand, if somebody starts talking about your brother, you need to stand up for that individual. I said if somebody talks about your sister, you need to rise up in the Holy Ghost and say shut your mouth. They're a sister. They're a brother. And I dwell in the city with them. They're my family in the city. We need to stand up. And we need to stand for what's right in this hour. You need to take ownership of this church. But understand, you need to loose this place right here. Get your hands off the pulpit. And allow your pastor to preach to you. Well, I know it's not popular preaching, but it's good preaching anyway. Well, I pay the most tithes in the church. Well, whoop de do. That money perish with thee. Understand there's a pastor that's got to give an account for every one of us. And understand when he's preaching to us, he's trying to keep us in the city. Loose the man of God and allow him to preach to you. Allow him to stand behind a pulpit and preach with authority and power from on high. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap for our pastor, our shepherd in the city, our shepherd in the city. Understand this hour that we live in, you better thank Almighty God if you've got a pastor to preach to you. There's so many yellow back ministers out there that won't preach nothing. They just say, well, just come to to the house of God and love God. I'm all about loving God, but there's some things we got to do. I'm not going to preach them to you today. You don't have to get worried. But understand there's a man of God that loves you. And I'm, I'm, I'm all about taking ownership of this city. But you need to loose the man of God to minister to you. And if it offends you, then you need to go home and pray. Or you need to get to an altar and pray. Don't get offended to the point that you, when you leave the city, you understand that this is the greatest place you'll ever be in the city of refuge. There was a city of Babel we find in Genesis chapter 11, and the Lord himself came down to check it out. He was so intrigued by cities. Understand that we find another city in Genesis chapter 28, and Jacob had a dream and saw a ladder that was stretched from from heaven, from earth to heaven, and angels were ascending and descending on it, and he called that city Bethel. Hebrews chapter eleven and verse ten, the Bible says, Abraham looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Understand in this hour today, the greatest place, the safest place you can possibly be, is in the city of refuge. And as I said, parents, the way you respond in the city of refuge is the way the children's going to respond in the city of refuge. There's no one in our church. We got some gospels. I know it's hard for you to believe that Camelsville's got gospels, but we do. They worry about television and, you know, all this other stuff, but the phone, <laughs> shoo, my Lord, it can be disastrous. Well, did you hear what so-and-so did? They don't ever call me because I'm not going to listen to it. Plain and simple. Now, so you've never had a problem in the city? Oh, yeah. I've had some problems in the city. But in the midst of that, I take them to Jesus Christ. He's the one that's able to help me. Talk to your pastor. Take it to him. Don't talk among yourselves. Hello. Come on. This is the greatest place to be, and I'm trying to help you today. This is the greatest place. This is the city of refuge. This is the place where you'll find hope. This is the place where you'll find strength. This is the place where it will help you be prepared for the city called New Jerusalem that God has prepared for them that love Him. And we're looking for that city and we desire to be in that city. The Bible talks about the suburbs of those cities and I'm getting ready to close, but it talks about the suburbs of those cities and we look and study in the suburbs and we find that the city and the suburbs, the suburbs was given to a place that was there outside of the city. 
that whenever you was running to the city and you was going in the right direction, headed to the city, that the mercy of God would extend out into the, into the suburbs. And when you got to those suburbs, you could call on the, the high priest. And whenever you call on the high priest, the avenger of blood would have to stop from taking your life. But there's something very interesting about this city of refuge and about what God has placed in our life. In our text today, we find something very important about the cities of refuge. We find that they had walls, but we also find that the city of refuge had gates. The walls were to, for protection from the avenger of blood. The walls was a place of protection. And in, it's not in the nose, but I stopped for just a minute to tell you, fall in love with holiness. There's nothing any greater in this world than having a holy life. And it is a wall that keeps us from the avenger of blood. It's a wall that keeps us from the avenger of blood. But there was something, no doubt, the most dynamic part of the city was the gates. Their gates were to allow people the opportunity to come in, but it was also there for the essential purpose of letting people go out. The walls today is our banner of blood and our holiness, but the gates in our life today and in our city is the choices that we make. I'd like to take your attention to Numbers 35 and verse 26. But if the slayer shall at any times come without the border of the city of his refuge, whether he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying there's the mercy of God if you're going in the right direction. But there's no mercy of God when you're going in the wrong direction. His mercy when you're running to the city, he's always reaching for you. He's always trying to help you. But when you've tasted of this glorious place called the city of refuge, and you turn your back on it and walk out. The Bible says the avenger of blood can take your life and not be persecuted for it because you should have stayed in the city. I preach to you today, this is the greatest place but you're going to have to make up in your mind to stay in the city. Young person, I encourage you, there's all kinds of things out there that this world has to offer and it's, it's luring. It's right outside the walls of the city. But you got to make up in your mind, I'm going to stay in the city today. It's a place of refuge. It's a place of peace. And it's a place of joy. The Bible says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You're not going to find anything any greater than what you've got a hold of today. And it's in the city of refuge. Can you stand with me? this Sunday afternoon. Preaching to those that's in the city, but there's those here today that you're not in the city. At night, you go home and you cry yourself to sleep. You feel like the pressures and pain of life is just too much to bear. I had a young lady that was a, she was a beautiful young lady I went to school with. She went away to college and she got in drugs and alcohol. Got so bad in her life that she jumped off the third story balcony of her apartment and tried to take her life. You say, it won't ever happen to me. But I'm here to tell you, when you leave the city of refuge, there's no telling what will happen in your life. This is the greatest place to be. If you're here today and you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can find it in the city of refuge. It's in this sanctuary today. There's a mighty God of heaven that loves you so much that he wants to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He wants to help you. And he wants to, he wants to let you know that there's a safe place that you can dwell. 
in this place today. As they begin to sing and play, is there somebody that would say, I want to I go to that city. I want to go to that city, Lord. I want to get in that city of refuge. I